Hey, hey, welcome to Digging Into the Bible. My name is Jim Barnard. This is a production of Tiller Coaching. All right, well, it's day 60. Shut up. Look at us go, man. I'm so proud of uh, what we've covered and what we've learned. Uh, thank you so much for being on this journey with me. Um, yeah, okay, so today I'm probably going to get a lot more personal, and uh, I really just don't know how long that's going to take. So I shouldn't waste time. Let's go ahead and dig into Matthew uh, 22, starting at verse 23. The same day Sadducees came to him, who say that there is no resurrection, and they asked him a question, saying, Teacher, Moses said, if a man dies having no children, his brother must marry the widow and rise up offspring for his brother. Now there were seven brothers among us. The first married and died, and having no offspring left his wife to his brother. And so too the second and the third down to the seventh. After them all, the woman died. In the resurrection, therefore, of the seven, whose wife will she be? For they all had her. <laughs> But Jesus answered them, You are wrong, because you know neither the scriptures nor the power of God. For in the resurrection they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are like angels in heaven. And as for the resurrection of the dead, have you not read what was said to you by God? I am the God of Abraham, and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. He is not God of the dead, but of the living. And when the crowd heard it, they were astonished at his teaching." But when the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together. And one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which is the great commandment in the law? And he said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And the second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. And on these two commandments depend all the law and all the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them a question, saying, What do you think about the Christ? Whose son is he? And they said to him, The son of David. He said to them, How is it then that David in the Spirit calls him Lord, saying, The Lord said to my Lord, Sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If then David calls him Lord, how is he his son? And no one was able to answer him a word, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. All right, so Jesus is like <laughs> kind of getting to the end of all these questions and to this barrage of tests and, and stuff. And um, this last section, I'm going to work backwards here. Um, this last section, I don't know, to me it really kind of just feels like hardcore theology. Like there are just things about the Bible and things about God that are, are mysterious, and yet we want to debate them and we want to understand them. Um, you know, and I, man, this feels weird to say as a pastor, it doesn't quite make sense, but I kind of loathe theology. <laughs> and I know that's crazy. Um, I mean, I actually love theology, but I just kind of hate debating the things that I just can never really know, you know, like Calvinism versus Arminianism. I, I really can't know. I have an opinion, but like, I don't know. I just don't feel like it's a good use of my time to debate it. Um, so anyways, this, this section about like, how can, how can Jesus be the son of David when he, David calls him son? Like, I don't know. It's mysterious. I, uh, I don't know. Tell me, Jesus. Like, I, I feel like maybe I'll, I'll learn that in heaven. Like the things that are now mysterious at one point will, will become unmysterious. And so I look forward to that. Um, now the middle section is, you know, the, the Pharisees are trying to trap him with this question, but Jesus's answer is, is really more for, I think, all of us, not just for shaming the Pharisees. It is um, this, this call to action, this great commandment of loving God and loving others. Like, that's not theology, that's action. And um, man, I, that's what I want to be about. I want to I wanna love God well. Um, sometimes I don't know how to, but I try to seek him and I try to um, figure that out and give the, the very best effort that I can. And um, in that, at that same time, I try to love others as much as I love myself. And, um, you know, once again, I don't do that perfectly, but I try. And uh, that commandment is really worth efforting. Um, so I want to put that aside and get to another piece of theology. <laughs> and I said I, I don't like debating theology, and I really don't want to debate it. But Jesus says something here that really, um, I don't know, bothers me oddly. So um, he's saying kind of like, 
well, not kind of, uh, almost explicitly, he's, he's saying, um, you, you're not going to have these relationships that you have on earth. Like in heaven, it's going to be a different kind of thing. So, um, you know, the matter of, you know, whose wife is this, is this person going to be like, uh, it's not going to be anyone's wife. We're all going to be like angels. We're going to all be enjoying the presence of God and, and really like the relationships of earth aren't going to matter. And uh, here's what bothers me, man. So uh, my wife, Alicia, is super sick. She got really sick three months after we got married. And uh, it, it's been a long, hard road. It's been, uh, you know, 14 years, like almost to the day, honestly. Like I'm, I'm filming this in December of 2020, and she got sick in December of 20, uh, of 06. And um, if I'm being honest, man, like it's amazing that she's, been able to survive this long because it's just been like just downhill for a long time some some seasons of of plateau and um, we've kind of enjoyed a longer season of plateau but it just feels like how long can she endure this and man i forget the five minutes today this is going to be a long one um it seems real that i'm going to lose her at some point and that's real that's hard that's um, not something I'm like pumped about, but I don't know. Like I've gone to a lot of funerals and I've done a fair share of, of funerals, and it it seems like we we always try to like comfort ourselves with this thought of like I'm gonna get to see grandma or, or you know my spouse or, or my kid in heaven, and so I'm just gonna keep pressing on and trusting God that you know I'm gonna get to heaven so that I can see you know my loved one again and. I think you know we'll we'll see them. I just don't know if we'll know them. I don't know if it will be important at that point. Like it, Jesus is kind of saying here in this section that like Alicia's not necessarily going to be my wife in heaven, and that you know kind of right now on the surface feels like that that kind of stinks. But at the same time, like okay, maybe maybe there's something better. <laughs> You know, I've really gotten to enjoy my wife during this time on earth, and I'm so thankful. Like, what a gift. But what if heaven is just so much better, and just being in the presence of God um, is just so much better than what we can even grapple with in our relationships? Like, man, we've got great relationships here on earth, don't we? And we should be so thankful. But maybe it just doesn't matter. Um, I, I just don't know. I mean, it's not for me to know. This is mysterious, and I don't want to shame anyone here that, like, has been comforted by the thought of um, getting to heaven so that they can see their loved one. Like, I I think that that's a a good thought. It's it's comforting and really maybe a good challenge to, like, you know, live life well and to continue to seek the things of God so that you can gain entrance into this wedding feast of heaven. I just don't know, man. Uh, It's hard. It it really is. And so I'm I'm weird about this. I hope, like... I'm not my usual chipper self because it, it, it's hard. It's just, I don't know. I just, uh, I, I have a lot of hope for what God has for me in heaven. But even more than that, I have a lot of hope for what God has for me here. And while I have Alicia, I just wanted to enjoy her because um, she is such a gift. So I don't know. I don't know how to land the plane here. And this is like way over time. So thanks for sticking in this with me um yeah i guess with that um thanks for uh watching thanks for listening um if you are enjoying this podcast and are learning or growing through this um yeah like share subscribe whatever i i don't know i just i I have truly enjoyed going through this book of matthew i feel like it has inspired me in some unique ways in a hard season um So expectation gaps, man. (laughs) All right, that's me landing the plane. Um, Yeah, thanks. I'll see you tomorrow. Take care. (laughs)